From historic defenses where it's rumored spectral soldiers of the past still roam, to popular museums filled to the brim with aged artifacts alongside their own collection of associated restless spirits. Are you sure you're ready to brave our picks for some of the most haunted places in Ontario? Number 5. The Lost Villages Museum the Lost Villages Museum, which is located off Front La Flamme Drive within Alt Park, out of Long Sioux, Ontario, is a popular open-air educational venue dedicated to the memorial of 10 communities destroyed through the creation of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Historically, this flooding was planned as a result of the establishment of the Moses Saunders Power Dam through August of 1954, and through subsequent months, those living and working in the area were told they'd need to evacuate to the new pre-planned community sites of Long Sioux and Ingleside. When all was said and done, more than 6,500 people were displaced during this project, and at 8 a.m. on July 1st of 1958, flooding commenced, resulting in all of the said former town sites being submerged within four days. A year later, in 1959, Alt Park, which had existed previously since 1914 in an area now submerged, was rededicated at its current location, and in 1977, the Lost Villages Historical Society was founded in an effort to retain the history of these, well, lost villages. A museum would open on site shortly after, and would feature 10 fully restored heritage structures moved from the submerged town sites and surrounding areas. The Lost Villages Museum remains open seasonally into the present from June through September, and offers a range of annual events and ample space for gatherings such as the numerous weddings it hosts. Chillingly, the whole of this weathered museum site is rumored to be haunted by the restless spirits of those forced to give up their lives and land in the name of the seaway, and those frequenting the expanse have reported a range of supernatural activity, including disembodied voices detected on the winds, extreme cold spots felt in adverse weather, and spook lights spied both near the museum and also over the waters right above submerged communities. The Trapper's Cabin, the Old Schoolhouse, the Church, and the Mason's Lodge are believed to be quite possibly the most paranormally charged landmarks across museum grounds, and near, many have told of shadowy figures that stalk the living, of objects spied moving about on their own, of both bootsteps and of full conversations heard emanating from empty rooms, and of encounters with the mysterious, small, and eerie spirit of an unidentified little girl. Number 4. The Fort Wellington National Historic Site the Fort Wellington National Historic Site, which is located off of the northern shore of the St. Lawrence River out of Prescott, Ontario, is a popular educational venue acting as one of the best preserved 19th century forts in the whole of Canada, which now interprets the history and significance of the St. Lawrence prior to, during, and preceding the War of 1812. Historically, an earlier earthen fort was first constructed on site from 1813 to 1814 amidst the War of 1812, and was purposed to protect the head of the Gallup Rapids on the St. Lawrence. However, following the war, by 1815, this defense would be left abandoned entirely by the British, until decades following when, from 1838 to 39, a new fort was fashioned atop pre-standing earthworks, to be utilized under both the British Army and Canadian militia. While the British Army would vacate the site by 1863, until 1923, the Canadian militia would remain behind, after which the expanse was handed over to the Dominion Parks Branch, which was a predecessor to Parks Canada, and in 1925, Fort Wellington would be designated a National Historic Site, the first of which in Ontario, in fact, to be managed under the federal government directly. The Fort Wellington National Historic Site remains open into the present, offering a range of tours and exhibits alongside all manner of annual events. Unlike many of the other locations we've covered in the past, while this weathered defensive site doesn't harbor a lot of different presences, the one ghost story it is surrounded by is definitely enough to land it on this list. As local legend has it, long ago, a soldier by the name of Terence Anderson was lost through the War of 1812, and whether due to a love he wasn't able to return to, or maybe even due to the fact that he was simply taken too soon, it's now claimed Terence's presence remains behind at Wellington, and has since grown a special fond of the second floor, where he's been known to slam doors, cause chills, and is even manifested seemingly simply to startle the living, a phenomenon so common it's been documented by staff and even authorities. Notably, Terence has been known to appear more often during the local fife practices, so if you're looking to run into this specter for whatever reason, those would be the times. Number 3. Kingston Penitentiary 
Kingston Pen, which is located between King Street West and Lake Ontario out of Kingston, Ontario, is an infamous former lockup turned educational venue which at the time of its closure was actually recognized as one of the oldest continuously operating prisons not just in the province or country but in the whole of the world. Historically, this weathered pin was first constructed from 1833 to 1834 and would open its gates to men, women, and even to occasional children as young as eight on June 1st of 1835 as the provincial penitentiary of the province of Upper Canada. And by 1867, the Kingston site would act as the main of three such institutions operated directly under the federal government. Over its lengthy lifespan, this weathered lockup has played host to three significant riots, the first of which transpired through October of 1932, the second of which through August of 1954 and that resulted in the destruction of the site's Grand Dome and in fires throughout resident shops and horse stables, and the third and most serious of which that transpired through April of 1971 and that involved hostages, inmate fatalities, and extensive damage. Incidentally, the South Wing was left so badly marred it was actually never reopened. Unfortunately for Kingston, through its later years, it would earn a reputation as a place where bad guards and those being punished for on-duty mishaps or political disagreements were sent. And by 2013, it would officially close its doors, after which the expanse was transformed into a museum and honored as a historic location. The Kingston Penitentiary remains open into the present and offers a range of touring options in both French and English. Chillingly, the whole of this weathered jail site is rumored to hold a number of souls still serving time from beyond the grave, alongside the restless spirits of those who lived, worked, and died within. And those living, frequenting its bounds have reported extreme cold spots felt in adverse weather, the phantom sounds of keys heard jangling from empty halls, and shadowy figures that stalk the living ominously at great lengths, or that seemingly play out prison dramas from long ago. Several informal investigations of the expanse have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and anomalies or orbs captured in photography and video, while disembodied voices and footsteps are often detected from empty cells. A final popular fable intertwines with actual history to tell of former guard William Wentworth who sadly was stabbed to death in 1961 while on a midnight shift. Perturbingly, his killer was never identified, which some claim left his spirit restless. The ghost of William is said to be particularly fond of the third floor in the regional treatment center, which acted as the prison psych ward, and where Wentworth's manifestation is often spied making his old rounds from life, some say as he keeps the more malevolent presences at bay and away from the living. Number 2. The Bytown Museum the Bytown Museum, which is located off of Canal Lane on the Radu Canal out of Ottawa, Ontario, is a popular educational venue housed within the city's oldest remaining stone structure being the Commissariat Building. Historically, the Commissariat Building was initially constructed in 1827 and would serve as a bulk supply depot utilized by many of the construction sites along the northern section of the Rideau Canal, and later would also house offices of the Commissariat officials while providing residential space. Through June of 1898, the Women's Canadian Historical Society of Ottawa would form, and in 1917, what was then called the Bytown Historical Museum was established under said society and would base itself out of the former city registry office. By the 1930s, the society would begin seeking a larger headquarters from which to house their amassment of artifacts. In 1948, the commissariat at the Ottawa Locks blipped on the radar, and in 1951, the society would purchase the building outright, after which they would set to work on a series of extensive renovations and modernizations. A year later, in 1952, the Bytown Museum would open its doors to the public. In 1956, the society would begin accepting men and would alter its moniker to the Historical Society of Ottawa instead. From 1982 to 1984, the society would launch a full restoration of the Commissariat, and in 1985, the site would reopen toting a slew of modernized exhibits mostly comprised of freshly acquired artifacts. The Bytown Museum remains open into the present, preserving the history surrounding the origins of Bytown and incidentally of Ottawa, as well as of surrounding lands and their progressive growth. 
Chillingly, and according to long-standing local legends, this weathered place of learning is haunted both by the souls of around a thousand workers who died through the construction of the Rideau Canal, and also by restless spirits tied to its many artifacts. And both staff and museum goers have reported a range of inexplicable happenings, including disembodied footsteps heard from empty spaces, voices that emanate from vacant rooms, and objects sighted moving about on their own or even floating through midair. On several occasions, doors have been witnessed opening and closing by themselves or even shaking violently within their frames. Many tell of odd malfunctions in well-maintenanced personal electronics, and a handful of terrifying instances even entail the very walls of the structure weeping tears, often from completely sealed stone areas. Those who have braved the first floor vault have reported the sensations of being pushed, of being poked, or even of being grabbed by an unseen force, while on the third floor, phantom baby cries are often detected from the old dolls kept there, which incidentally have also purportedly moved their eyes, turned their heads, or even winked at those passing. And the manifestation of former canal construction officer, one Duncan McNabb, has been known to follow nearby living at a distance. Number 1. The Peterborough Liftlock National Historic Site the Peterborough Liftlock National Historic Site, which is located along the Trent Canal out of the city of Peterborough, Ontario, is an iconic vessel lift that acts as number 21 along this particular waterway, which is claimed to be, or at least to have been, the highest hydraulic boat lift in the world, with said lift measuring in vertically at 65 feet. Historically, this particular lift lock was initially designed through the late 1800s under Superintendent of the Trent Canal Richard Birdsall Rogers, with construction approved in 1896 and contractors and crews completing the job by 1904. When all was said and done, the Peterborough lift boasted a range of engineering firsts, such as being the first of such locks to be based out of concrete, and subsequently being the largest structure in the world formed entirely from unreinforced concrete. In 1979, the Peterborough lift lock was designated a National Historic Site. Through the 1980s, a visitor center boasting interactive displays and all manner of exhibits was established and constructed, and in 1987, the lift was honored under the American Society of Mechanical Engineers as a historical mechanical engineering landmark. This weathered old aqua elevator remains in operation into the present, with its passage still in use by water traffic and its visitor center open to the public. Classically, this old lift lock is rumored to harbor both the spirits of those who died through its construction, as well as the drifting souls of those who have ended their lives near the canal, and those living frequenting the area have reported a range of supernatural phenomena, including disembodied footsteps and voices that emanate from empty spaces, objects by moving about on their own, and odd malfunctions in well-maintenanced equipment. While the most famous presence on site, being that of Art, who it's believed was a former worker who died of a heart attack on the job, has been known to steal crowds. Others tell of a spectral woman who in life sometime through the 1840s was supposedly burned at the stake right near, and whose restless spirit has since made a habit of tormenting passing men, even so much so as to cause them to have very real and very dangerous accidents. Incidentally, during the lift's construction, it said one worker inexplicably lost his balance and fell into the central pillar framing to his doom, resulting in his corpse simply being built into a solid cement tower. While later into construction, it's also claimed three more workers fell to their deaths due to unstable scaffolding. Pretty spooky stuff, if you ask us. Several informal investigations of the Peterborough lift lock have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and extreme temperature fluctuations on thermal grids, while others have reported odd odors, phantom screams, and both spook lights and ghostly faces that appear suddenly within the tunnels. Taking its extensive and somewhat dark history into account and coupling it with such an impressive range of associated local legends and tales of encounters with the otherworldly, we felt the Peterborough Liftlock National Historic Site was a perfect pick as the most haunted place in Ontario. Thanks for joining us for this list of some of the most chillingly haunted places in Ontario, Canada. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel deserves a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.